Ted Timberlake, uh, well, co-author of Year of the Rat. This is the book that people have asked us to um, talk about, have you on, and talk about. Why do you think people are interested? What's it say? Well, basically, we uh, lay out a very convincing case of uh, illegal Chinese money in to the uh, Clinton administration at the highest levels and favors out. Why did you decide to put this in book form? Uh, both Bill and I were uh, on, uh, and I'm still on a congressional committee on the House side, and Bill's over on the Senate, and had a lot of experience both uh, in our past lives, 30, 40 years each of, uh, actually 30 and 20, of national security research. And when we started to follow what had happened since October of 96, uh, we found that the complete story wasn't being told. Uh, the White House is absolutely brilliant in breaking down the story into very bite-sized small pieces so that as you see it flow through, you really don't have a sense of urgency that something bad happened. So we took a major step back and based on a lot of research, a lot of documentation, laid out, in our opinion, a very convincing case of 11 possible or 11 channels of money in and favors out, all relating to the People's Republic of China and Bill Clinton. William Triplett, a uh, lot of news this morning that the House Judiciary Committee abandoning look into campaign finance, not calling John Wong and all those kind of things. Why then should people read your book if the Republicans don't seem to be interested? Well, I wouldn't say precisely the Republicans. The Judiciary Committee had never held a hearing. That ne the material had never really been presented to them. And to come in at this late date and jump on it probably would be confusing and 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 I would think it was, would have been a mistake. Now, what they did say in the statement is that the investigation of campaign financing will go on. I think it will be done uh, reasonably, step by step, and I believe at the end of the day that a lot of the materials that's in the uh, year of the rat will be uh, uh, in front of the public. Where do you people work now? Where's, what's your job right now? I work for a Republican senator on, on which, the Senate side. Which one? Uh, his name is Bennett. He's from Utah. But I, I actually write on China for a whole series of people, uh, Democrats and Republicans. Are you full-time with Senator Bennett? Oh, yes. And where do you work now? I'm uh, staff uh, of the House Committee on Rules for Chairman Solomon, by uh, National Security. We will get all of this out as the next uh, 70 minutes go on, so we're going to go to the phones and let our callers help uh, find out what's in this book. Uh, it's, is it Carl Springs, Florida, or Coral Springs, Florida? Carl yeah, I thought so. Go ahead, please. You're on the air. Well, I'm, j I'm calling. Uh, I just want to make a comment about the book, but I, I also, uh, my main comment, although I know the book exposes a lot of the corruption that, it, that goes on with this administration, um, I think the book illustrates a, 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 an example of what, what's not happening in the media and the lack of outrage that goes, that goes on by the, by the media towards the Clinton administration. And if you ask most people who give Mr. Clinton favorable ratings who Mokhtar Riyadi is, or Charlie Tree, or uh, Johnny Wong, they won't, they don't know. Most of that 60% or 65% favorable rating that Clinton gets, you ask them specific questions about who these people are, they have no idea. Thanks, caller. And in your book, you have lots of pictures, including Mokhtar Riyadi. Yes, who sir. Is, who is he? He's a patriarch of the uh, Lippo uh, banking empire out of Jakarta, Indonesia. His uh, Lippo group is associated with uh, organizations that are connected with Chinese uh, intelligence. Uh, his son, James, was basically the, uh, he had the American portfolio, our, our country's portfolio, and he hired John Wong uh, as his man first in America, and then he bragged that John Wong was uh, his man in the American government. Uh, very few people realize this until we say it, and it's documented, that uh, in essence, uh, the leading campaign uh, contributions to the 92 cycle for President Clinton, uh, it wasn't a Hollywood mogul, it wasn't a labor union, it was uh, the realities of uh, Indonesia. Oh, California. Florida. Go ahead, please. Good morning, gentlemen. I'd like to know why you wrote this nasty book. <laughs> Number one, Chris, Chris, just a minute now. Don't stop. It, yeah, you laugh. It's no laughing matter. Christopher Cox has got an investigation going right now. You know you should wait until his investigation is finished before you make any accusations, you donkeys. <laughs> Mr. Triplett. Well, we have in fact talked to Mr. Cox's committee, and uh, they're looking at some portions of this, but they're only looking at, at a relatively narrow uh, portion of it. We're looking at a wide portion of, of this, uh, and uh, we're looking at, at things beyond the, the mandate of Mr. Cook, Cox. Specifically in your book, is there anything new? Oh, yes, absolutely. There's a whole series of things new. One of the first things that's new is that uh, this picture uh, shows 
if I can get it, I I got it, right get it on here. This picture right here, I'll let you put it on. This picture right here shows the president and the first lady with a Macau uh, gangster figure. And uh, <clears throat> to turn it over once, two more pages, uh, we have another picture of the vice president here with another, uh, with another figure. And this man and the previous man are, uh, are associated with gangster uh, interests. And put together, we're looking at something in the order of $2 million came in from that source into the Clinton-Gore system in, uh, in 1996. Hayesville, North Carolina, go ahead, please. Hi, I talked to Mr. Brandenburg at the Justice Department, and he sent me a, a copy of the indictment of Charles Tree, and it indicates that Charles Tree was indicted for defrauding the DNC. And also on January 29th at 10.30 in the evening on CNN 24-hour headline news, the day after Tree was indicted, they indicated that Charles Tree was a Republican operative. Um, of Johnny Chung, there's pictures of Johnny Chung cheek to jowl with Bob Dole, New Gingrich. There's more stories about Warren Meadow being a Republican operative, offering Harold Ickes $2 million. When the American taxpayer realizes that they've been set up, Republicans made illegal contributions to the Democratic Party and used the taxpayers' money to investigate illegal campaign contributions that they made. Thanks, caller. And this is a picture here of Charlie Tree. We go to Edward Timberlake. Oh, certainly. Let me, let me explain. Uh, Charlie Tree goes way back uh, with President Clinton. In fact, the L.A. Times reports that uh, when they meet, they embrace like brothers, that's their words. Uh, he has a favorite expression he calls Clinton, uh, President Clinton called Lao Key or Old Clinton, a turn of reverence. Uh, we went back offshore and found out that Charlie Tree, uh, not only going way back with the president, has a unique uh, factor in his background. He's a member of a Chinese uh, triad society, a uh, secret criminal society. You have to remember now, Charlie Tree was the gentleman who uh, brought $460,000 in checks into the president's legal defense fund. Uh, in essence, the uh, legal defense fund is directly to the president. There's no spin here. That's not hard money. It's not soft money. It's not campaign money. It's directly to Bill Clinton. So in essence, when Mr. Tree brought that money in, uh, he was offering it up to Bill Clinton. Again, 460000 coming from the fellow we identified earlier, Ung Lap Singh, who has two hats. He wears a hat that runs a Fortuna Hotel, or he owns it. Uh, gambling and prostitution is how he makes money. It's legal in Macau, but that's where the money comes from on one side. He's also a communist Chinese official. I'll leave it up to the viewers to determine how the president wants to character that money that comes to Trey is it gambling prostitution money or uh, Chinese government money but to complete the story Charlie Tree walks in drops off $460,000 uh, and then goes to lunch at the Palm here in Washington meets a fellow named Mark Middleton who's pled the fifth and hands him a letter now this is at the height of the Taiwan crisis in which uh, American carrier battle groups are going in harm's way uh, People's Republic of China bracketing Taiwan with uh, intermediate range missiles. Uh, countries at a flashpoint. It's, it's pretty uh, tense internationally. And Mr. Tree delivers a letter directly to the president saying, in essence, and we show some of his other writings, so it's just suspect whether he even wrote the letter, but in essence, back off on Taiwan. Uh, China has a history of, war, of going to war over issues like that. So right in the middle of an international crisis, money goes in in the morning, and a letter and a message is delivered in the afternoon to the highest levels of the White House. Pretty direct. Charlie Tree is not a Republican operative. Taking calls for the two authors of Year of the Rat and uh, Edward Timberlake. We'll give you a little background <clears throat> on him. He's originally from Perth, Amboy, New Jersey. He was a United States Naval Academy grad and son of a career Navy man appointed by LBJ. He's, did you also get a Cornell University master's? Nice graduate school, yes, Graduate sir. degree. Serves uh, with Jerry <clears throat> on Jerry Solomon's House uh, Rules Committee at the yes, moment. Yes, that's correct. How long, how long have you been there? Been there about th oh, just a little less than three years. Prior to that, House Government Reform and Oversight Committee, professional staff investigator, along with David Bossie. I actually uh, had a very strange, uh, I was assigned early in October of 96 to the investigation from rules. I was on the rules committee. We had 11 committees sitting around a table trying to figure out what happened in this, uh, invest in, in this issue of John Wong being brought to our attention. Let me again tell your, your views. This is media driven. This, this whole thing started with the First Amendment, uh, investigative journalists. The Republicans didn't create this scandal. The, the, the investigative journalists did. The House was caught by surprise. We sat there. I was assigned there. And then the decision was made uh, partially through the cycle to consolidate all the investigations in uh, Chairman Burton's committee, where I was then told to pack up all my files and uh, move to the Chairman Burton's committee, where I served for a brief period of time. Uh, I left. 
uh, when John Rowley left and James Rodeo left and a fellow named Jamie Apperson left. Uh, I then was immediately picked up over on the Senate side where I served for Senator Bennett's uh, person on the Thompson Committee. And then Mr. Solomon asked me to come back to the Rules Committee. So like Zilig, I've been the staffer behind all the various committees. Woodland, Texas, and the conservative line. Good morning. Brian Lamb, this is an honor to get to say hello to you. It's been eight years since I got through, and you're my hero. Good morning. Welcome. And, uh, author, do you have a distribution problem with your book? Because I've had trouble getting it, <coughs> and if you are having a distribution problem, who's causing that? And the second question would be, there seems to be a reluctance in the mainstream media to get this story out. It's complicated, and it's going to take a little work. Is there any way to get around that and to get the truth out? Thanks. Let me first say that it's a regnery publication. And what about our first question? Uh, the first, the caller ha has a point. Uh, we're having uh, some distribution problems, and they're wonderful problems. And the wonderful problems are there because, quite frankly, the book is very popular. It's selling out everywhere, and we're having trouble keeping it stocked. How many copies were printed originally? I think we started out with 20, and by the middle of the month, we'll have 85,000. And is it on anybody's bestseller list yet? It was on the 20, uh, it was number 27 on the New York Times bestseller list this Sunday. And what about her second question? I actually, do you, either one of you remember it? Uh, mainstream I, it's media. Mainstream, mainstream media, media yeah. I issue. Uh, I think the, the issue is, is more that it's, uh, that it's a new uh, book out, and uh, we consider Brian, Brian Lamb to be mainstream media. Well, how about it? Have you had people that have refused to uh, put you on? Not really. Uh, we, there's a lot of competition to go on shows like this and so forth and so on, and we're just getting started. We've done a lot of, uh, of talk radio. We're on the upside of the scale on our way up, and uh, we appreciate being here. Being here. Rumps in New Jersey on the moderate line. Go ahead, please. Good morning, good morning. Welcome. Uh, I was just wondering, with all this evidence out there, how is it possible that Clinton keeps escaping all these... Uh, all this judgment that should be coming down against him. I just, I'm amazed every time I watch uh, news programs and, and these committee hearings and everything else, they come up with zero. Gentlemen. Well, actually, I said it earlier, and I'll say it again. Uh, the White House is absolutely brilliant. They are magnificent in the way in which they uh, can take the, the issue and make it and break it down into bite-side pieces. The other one is a, a bit of stonewalling here. Having served both uh, on the Solomon, Thompson, and Burton committees, that's something I know a little bit about. And uh, the fellow you showed, Unglap Singh, the uh, man who owns the Fortuna, uh, he... Um, they asked, the Thompson Committee was really diligently trying to find out how many times he went to the White House. And lo and behold, right after they finished that part of the cycle, going into the August recess, uh, finally, the Waze records, the entry records to the White House were released by Mr. Uh, about Mr. Uh, Unglap Singh. Well, that was not effective for the Thompson Committee to research, but then the Burton Committee picked it up, and a very brilliant analyst, uh, a man on the Burton Committee, married up Mr. Unglap Singh's entries into America uh, with his cash transaction records that he signed crossing our borders. As you know, uh, because of various reasons, uh, money laundering, drugs, etc., there's a, uh, or other reasons, just not to impugn anyone that carries a lot of money in their pocket, but you have to sign uh, how much, how many dollars you're bringing into the country. It's over 10,000. And lo and behold, the very first time Unglap Singh shows up, he comes into the country with $175,000 in his pocket. And two days later, he's in the White House. That pattern repeats itself uh, eight to ten times. That's why when the Waves records were stonewalled, uh, that cost numerous months of investigation, but when American uh, uh, investigators, uh, journalists, and the American body politic find this sort of thing out, then they get to see the picture of money in, bad guys in, and favors out. He's the patron of Charlie Tree. In uh, about 45 minutes or so, or maybe a little longer than that, Lars Eric Nelson will join us. He has a column today in the New York Daily News. And William Triplett uh, was born in Corpus Christi, Texas. You were Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chief for Public and Counsel. Was that for Jesse Helms? Uh, yes. Uh, I came to the Hill originally with Senator Luger. And uh, when S Senator uh, Helms took over the Republican side, I stayed. And you attended St. John's College. You graduated from the University of Maryland. I did. And also have a law degree from Georgetown University. I, I have a master's law degree. Let's go to Frederick, Maryland next on the Liberal Line. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. I, um, I watch C-SPAN quite a bit. I've watched judiciary uh, hearings, every single one of them, from hours on end. I am wondering, what is the purpose of this book? Number one question. Is, is, this, is the purpose of this book... Uh, is another way 
of uh, since the Judiciary Committee cannot seem to to impeach Mr. Mr. Clinton, that now you are trying to show another way through the public on C-SPAN that um, here's here's something else public. Look at this too. Let me let me ask you first. When did you start writing the book? Um, about a week or two after Monica Lewinsky came out. We came to the conclusion that the attention was going to be on Monica Lewinsky and not on important things uh, like national security. And we felt, frankly, that we were in a position to tell the story and no one else was going to be able to do it. So the answer to, to the specific question of what's the purpose of the book, uh, my colleague and I decided that the story had to be told about national security and we did it. You will notice it is the only uh, campaign finance book out there and it's the only one that covers the national security aspects. Here's uh, some of the comment on the book jacket. You can see here the book sells for $24.95. Our next call on the conservative line is from Toms River, New Jersey. Go ahead, please. I just want to thank these gentlemen so, so very, very much. This is the real issue of what this man has done to our country and I'm so happy you finally brought it out to this country. This is not about Monica. This is about what this man has done to jeopardize our national security. I've said it before, and I say it again. Get him the hell out of office. Thank you. Let's go to Osprey, Florida, next on the moderate line. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Um, I have a question regarding um, John Wong. I've heard a great deal about his, uh, him, and I wondered if the authors were able to uh, find any connection between him and the Chinese government, and if so, how do they explain his uh, high security clearance, which he was able to maintain uh, even after he left his uh, Commerce Department? Let me first ask uh, either one of you, where is John Wong? Uh, so far as we can tell, John Wong is enjoying life in California. Uh, he's not left the country. Uh, he did, in fact, take the Fifth Amendment before uh, Senator Thompson's committee, but that's where he is. Uh, with regard to the question that the um, uh, caller raised about John Huang, we devote an entire chapter uh, to John Huang at the Commerce Department and also another chapter to the Riyadis, which, which involves him. Uh, caller is right on target with regard to the question of the security clearance. How he managed to get a security clearance when he was not a government official and how he kept it for a year when he was an official at the Democratic National Committee has never been satisfactorily uh, answered. Uh, we think that it should never have happened in the first place and that's one of the, th the issues that we cover. Now with regard to the Chinese connection, uh, we have an, an entire chapter devoted to, to that and uh, uh, we show how he was, in essence, uh, gathering materials for his, uh, for his former employers, the Riyadi family, and also he had, according to the CIA, at least one financial connection, meaning money, uh, to the Chinese ben espionage. Or ben Oregon on the Liberal Line, good morning. Uh, yes. Um, it's kind of odd, me calling up on the Liberal Line, I guess, because uh, I am going to criticize my uh, fellow Democrats, but... I'm curious if in your book you make any connection with Diane Feinstein, a uh, senator from California, and her, her constant boosterism of uh, the Indonesian government uh, from before. And, well, actually, as far as what I've heard from some friends, uh, currently also. I'll hang up and listen for your answer. Thank you. Edward Timberlake. Well, first thing, uh, both Bill and I, I think we overwrote the book in that each chapter could be a book unto itself. Any aspiring author should pick a chapter and, and go for it. But uh, in producing about, I guess, 90,000, 100,000 words, uh, our editors finally said, uh, keep the focus simple, make it simple, keep it the People's Republic of China and Bill Clinton and Al Gore. So in essence, we, we know an awful lot about other connections, but uh, it's not really in the pages of the book. The central focus is what happened at the highest levels uh, in the Oval Office at presidency, vice presidency level, and uh, the minions and uh, agents and operatives of the People's Republic of China. William Triplett, when did you finish the book? What was the last day before you submitted the manuscript? Uh, the first draft was the f was completed uh, in the first of June, but we added another chapter over the summertime, and it went to press on the first of September. So we were essentially writing as it almost went out the door. What was the chapter you added? Uh, the military space chapter. And why was that added? Because uh, we found new developments uh, when we went out to the Far East. We found uh, more people involved in this uh, transfer of, of military technology to the Chinese, and we felt it was important to put it in. Columbia, Missouri, on the conservative line, good morning. Good morning, Brian. 
You've always been one of my heroes. I try to watch you every Friday and every Monday morning. It's nice to have you with us, sir. Thank you. I'm retired from the military, and I'd like to thank these two men for what they're doing. I just don't think that the American people are aware of everything that this scumbag has done since he's been the president of the United States. It just upsets me greatly. I don't know why I dedicated 30 years of my life to a country who supports the actions that this man has done in the last six years. Everyone that I talk with here in this area can't stand the man. I don't believe any of the polls, and I believe what these two gentlemen are doing is a great thing. Thank you. Thanks, caller. Let's go on to St. Louis, Missouri on the moderate line. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Brian? Fine, sir. What would you like to say to our guests? Well, I uh, appreciate the uh, gentleman being on. They're connected with various committees. I'm wondering uh, if they have any idea how many uh, people in the Thompson hearings have taken the fifth compared to the Iran sc uh, scandals. And uh, if... Uh, with all these other scandals, how many people have gone to jail uh, compared to the Iran scandals? Thanks. I think um, we're not that good on the Iran scandals. I think uh, at, I know of only one person that, who took the Fifth Amendment, maybe two or three. In the case of this business that we're looking at, somewhere over a hundred people have either fled the country or taken the Fifth Amendment. Uh, and in, to add to that, some of the testimony of uh, key witness here and there is not very credible. So uh, certainly we've got a, a much greater problem than we did in the uh, Iran-Contra business. I don't remember anyone who fled the country in the Iran-Contra case. Edward Timberlake, what's the rules about taking money for books like this while you're still on the committees? I had to... Uh, uh, submit a letter to the Eth House Eth Committee on Ethics uh, and lay it out. I also presented it to my boss, Chairman Solomon. And uh, it's, I'm going to tell it to national television, but uh, since I had such a low salary, I didn't even trigger any of the ethics requirements. Uh, I was laid up uh, a year ago. I had uh, three operations for skin cancer across my forehead. And uh, in the month of April of last year, when we decided to write the book, um, I had the uh, chemical peel where they kind of rip your face off. So I had the luxury of really spending uh, three weeks just pounding away on this thing. And uh, as long as uh, we don't use classified information, which both of us has surrendered our security clearances, uh, all the information is in the public realm. Uh, let fly. We go next to, uh, let me see which line I've got here, Miami, Florida on the conservative line. Good morning. Good morning. Curious about an article I read April 6, 1997, regarding the Kennedy estate, which sold over $1 million over the asking price. Um, this was Eric Hotung. Which Kennedy estate? The Florida one? Uh, no, the one in um, McLean, Virginia. Oh, yes. And it says here, Hotung, Eric Hotung, who was the son of Sir Robert Hotung, who inspired the novels Taipan and Noble House by James Clavell, uh, offered, uh, gave 100000 last year, uh, this is 1997, attending one of the controversial coffees with President uh, Clinton at the White House, followed up by Ho-Tung, also hired a Washington law firm two years ago to lobby Congress on behalf of Chinese interests. Um, I'm just wondering if you have ever pursued this and checked out with the Weichert, W-E-I-C-H-E-R-T, realtors in McLean, Virginia, uh, to see if the estate, uh, about the estate. Thanks, William Triplett. Um, the rumor around Washington is that uh, Eric Hotung doesn't like the house and is looking for a new one. So that's the, that's the first story. Uh, second, um, he was covered by the Thompson Committee. We did not include him because we couldn't find a military connection. Nearly everything that's in the book has a military or espionage connection. We go next to Wilmego, Kansas. Is that correct? That's correct. Good morning. You're on the liberal line. What would you like to say to our guests? Well... I'd like to say I believe it is the year of the rat. I think the Republicans and Democrats basically are all rats. I think that they're very unethical. And uh, the bureaucrats are very unethical, and nobody is accountable in this country, and I believe everybody believes that. Where did you get this feeling? At what point did you start to think this way? Oh, I've thought this way for quite some time. And uh, my question is, where does the money go that you're receiving from this book? Mr. Timberlake. 
Well, money that I will go is probably will go off to my uh, kids and uh, hopefully uh, cover me for a while. Uh, this book was written. We make a profit on it, I hope. And I hope you buy it and contribute a little bit more money. Uh, but in essence, uh, the book was not written for the money, if that's the insinuation here. The book was written to get the story out. Uh, essentially, uh, the element that you're concerned about, uh, we have a simple fundamental argument that if the President of the United States, at the height of his uh, job performance popularity, not not character popularity, which is pretty low, but job performance popularity uh, is held accountable for things like this. Uh, you can bet your bottom dollar that neither Republican nor Democrats, but especially Republican politicians, will, will really never touch any questionable money again because the media will be all over them forever. Let me ask uh, Bill Triplett about this. This is from a Lars Eric Nelson column back in September. Democrats charged based on documentary evidence that former Republican National Chairman Haley Barber illegally raised foreign contributions in Hong Kong. But last April, Hatch, that's Orrin Hatch, threatened incoming Assistant Attorney General James Robinson that, quote, all hell is going to break loose if the Justice Department tried to indict Barber. Uh, we were there when uh, the question of Haley Barber uh, came up. I think uh, Haley uh, basically got into uh, a mix-up because the, the contributions that went into his uh, uh, think tank came f originally from a man who was an American citizen. What he didn't know is that the man gave up his American citizenship, and so therefore uh, he, that's how he ended up uh, before the Thompson Committee. But no one really took that very seriously. So Haley Barber, think. in your opinion, did nothing wrong? So far as I can tell. Atlanta, Georgia, on the Liberal Line, good morning. Good morning, uh, Ms. Uh, Mr. Lamb. It's good to talk to you. Thank you for Steve Spann. I hope you don't cut me off too soon. I want to say to the gentleman, your guest, what in the world do they expect for us to do with, in regards to China? We have to have some type of relationship Absolutely. with China. And then to, to try to make uh, President Clinton out to be a criminal because he is trying to build relations with not just China, but a lot of the various countries around this world. What, we want to get into a war with China? I don't think that, that the American people could stand it. My husband's in the military, and I don't think that a lot of people could take it. I think a lot of people would die if we don't try to build some type of relationship with China. What we go, You're not going to march out to war, and why are you trying to push this? Clinton is trying to keep peace, and what is wrong with that? Edward Timberlake. Well, actually, uh, uh, your call raised a very important issue, and with her husband in service, uh, I'm very respectful of that. Uh, what we're concerned about, uh, Bill and I, uh, we understand China. China's real. We both worked, uh, I worked for Ronald Reagan and George Bush. China's a fact. You've got to deal with it as a large country that uh, hopefully if they had a First Amendment would be a tremendous force for good. We have a lot of respect for the Chinese people. What we were concerned about, we drew the line on two issues. One, high-tech transfer of technology that has military applications and the slave labor issue of course at the AFL and CIO and PLA companies they're all over that one but the bottom line is that the People's Republic of China when they get high-tech military equipment you kinda get a double bounce out of them uh, this administration has not uh, uh, sanctioned any of the activity in which they proliferate we have this documented weapons of mass destruction uh, tactical uh, weapons against uh, the could be a threat against fleet action uh, in the Gulf. Uh, the nation of Israel is uh, put further at risk because China is a proliferator to rogue nations like Iran, Iraq, Libya, Syria, and that's wrong. And that's where uh, the Clinton administration, by not invoking sanctions, Gore McCain Act is the name of it, by the way, uh, has really put some of the men and women in, in uniform at risk and a lot of our allies at risk. That's where we f really draw the line on national security. So. Yesterday, according to the Washington Times and other papers, Tree, that's Charlie Tree, pleads not guilty to obstruction. Clinton Backer faces trial. That's a January trial. It's scheduled at the moment for January the 4th. We'll ask our guests about this in a moment. Jacksonville, Florida, on the moderate line. Good morning. Morning. Uh, yes, sir. I believe the problem is a little bit bigger than Bill Clinton. I think Bill Clinton might be a player. But uh, I believe a lot of this is uh, when we're taking money from a foreign country, it's working to a globalization. And I was wondering if that's the way you feel. And also, why isn't the message getting out to the people that this means giving up our sovereignty as a country? Thanks. Bill Triplett. Uh, the, we are trying to get the message out uh, with regard to this aspect of it. And uh, we agree that there is globalization of the economy, uh, but we're looking at military transfers. That is, money came into the Clinton-Gore system from people who were associated with the Chinese military and espionage apparatus, 
And we are arguing that in return, there were changes in American policy that reflected both the military side of things and the espionage side what of things. What was the publication date of this, Ed Timberlake? Oh, I guess six weeks ago or so. Yeah, they're very vague on that. The book is published, but it's not in the stores for a couple well, weeks. The reason I asked this it's is been how, about five weeks. How many reviews? Have you gotten any reviews in the big papers? Yeah, not in a big paper. Uh, we Yes, I'm sorry. I apologize for that statement. Uh, we got a very, very, very good review in the American Spectator. <laughs> so uh, that was very kind. Any, uh, any like the New York Times? No, sir. Um, we're just starting. We're, we're, we have high hopes that uh, this will become an issue. We think we're on the right side of history and that uh, by driving the message home, uh, the mainstream media will uh, take it seriously and, and challenge it. I mean, that's the issue here. Uh, get this out in the, in the realm of ideas and debate it. Let's go next to, I believe it's Cleo, Michigan. Go ahead, please. Are you on, Cleo? Cleo, Michigan, are you there? Now, we're talking to Long Island. Good morning. You're on the liver line. Hi. Good morning. Uh, oh, I didn't mute again. <laughs> My thing doesn't want to mute. Just a second. Yeah, you get that mute on so we don't get that feedback. Hey, you got it now? Wait a minute. My... Just one minute. Oh, it's off. Okay. Uh, on uh, the man that worked for Jerry Solomon, it seems that, you know, if you can't get Clinton down on one thing, you'll get him down on another. And the American Spectator, what a laugh. But anyway, Jerry Solomon, I'm very familiar with... Uh, Upstate, let the GE um, pollute the Hudson River, and he thinks that's all right. But also, in New York State here now, I uh, came out last night on one program, and I had to go into the um, Internet to find it. We have uh, William Powell, uh, Powell of the uh, Republican, uh, head Republican, who's put in the tacky and everything, arrested for extortion. He, it seems almost, when you read it, that he's probably connect, connected with the mafia. So, you know, you people are, are a laugh. Gentlemen? Well, first, let me say something. Uh, I'm very honored to work for Chairman Solomon, who's retiring. I'm going to retire with him, by the way. And uh, Bill can go even further back on this. But he took on Ronald Reagan, his greatest hero, and George Bush. He was a bear on proliferation of Chinese on high-tech equipment. The man has been consistent all along. So to sit at a table with his backing uh, really empowered me to be on the right side of this issue because he's been totally consistent. Bill was with him in the beginning. Absolutely. Uh, Chairman Solomon has been working the, the satellite issue, what we call military space, for at least 10 years. And that goes back to the Reagan administration. We have two guests here this morning for the next, uh, oh, about 40 minutes to talk about their book, Year of the Rat, published by Regnery, Edward Timberlake, and William C. Triplett II. We go next to Cleo, Michigan. Thanks for waiting on the conservative line. Yes. Um, first of all, I want to thank you, Brian Lamb, for your wonderful book notes. And it's been through book notes over the years that I've totally moved in my uh, perspective. Um, for one thing, Gregory Press puts out nothing but anti-Clinton-type literature. It is not balanced. I have observed, you know, I have watched your program as you've had some of their books on. I, I guess I challenge these men to come up with one book that has been moderate, um, whereas with book notes, I have read such things as Sleepwalking Through History, Due to You, the Gary Webb book, on dark alliances or whatever. I have read many, many books, and as I have been reading these books, my whole perspective of the Reagan-Bush years changed. And I find these men, particularly Mr. Timberlake, Timberlake, as, you know, typical of the right-wing authors who are silly acting, who laugh foolishly, who really don't have a perspective, not a balanced view at all. And, you know, that's why, for instance, Sleepwalking Through History gave me, it completely changed my viewpoint. Thanks. And that lady called on the conservative line. I know that. In fact, I'll, <laughs> I'll recommend a conservative newspaper for that lady, and she can read my latest op-ed. The second one, Bill and I just published one recently, but the one prior to that was praising President Clinton and Hillary Clinton for doing something magnificent, which is they got all over the Pentagon for the Gulf War illness. Uh, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have peeled away what happened to those men and women who served in the Gulf who are now ill. Uh, so uh, to, to label me as a right-wing anti-Clinton extremist, when I put my name as a Republican staffer on a major piece of work that praised the president and the first lady, well, I'll let the evidence speak for itself. Bill Triplett and page 217 of your book. 
It says, President Clinton's Executive Order Number 1, Ethics Commitments by Executive Branch Appointees, required the new Clinton-Gore appointees to make three pledges. One, no lobbying for five years after they left the government. Two, no activity on behalf of a foreign government. And three, no representation of a foreign government or foreign corporation for five years after being engaged in a trade negotiation. Is, has that happened? Oh, yes, absolutely it's happened. And now, have, have they followed it? Have, have oh, oh, have they followed it? Uh, I thought you meant, asked me, have they violated it? Uh, no, they haven't followed it. Uh, was it a rule of law or just an executive order? It was an executive order, but it should have applied to, to them. But the, it was, in fact, overtaken by events on the day it was, uh, was issued because uh, we believe that the Clinton-Gore administration could not have come to power without the assistance of foreign money. It's not an accident that uh, business associates of the Chinese espionage system were, in fact, the number one contributors to Clinton-Gore in 1992. Now, do you have any of these kind of restrictions if you were to leave the, the Senate? Uh, the we House? do, but I'm not leaving the Senate. And how about in your case? Oh, I'm Senate? sure, but I'm just going to retire. Callis Bell, Montana, on the moderate line. Good morning. I was listening to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I was listening to uh, uh, CNN the other day, and they had the head of the DNC on there, and he mentioned that they had returned all the money that was illegal. But after they questioned him, he said, well, actually, no cash had been returned, that uh, they, did, they were shortage of funds right now, and when they had the funds, it was going to be returned. Do you know anything about that? Mr. Timberlake? Uh, I, no, sir. What we, we identified the money in and the favors out, and we hope that when they say uh, they're going to return it because it was illegal, uh, they have the honor and integrity of doing that. Give us some more specifics, Mr. Triplett, in this book that the charges you make against the Clinton administration. Uh, in the back, there's a whole series of bullets uh, which show, in the conclusion chapter, which show uh, where, where we think they went wrong. Uh, for example, we think that uh, they should have enforced the anti-proliferation laws, including the one that was written by Al Gore. Uh, we think that they should have, uh, have not transferred uh, high technology to China. And I want to talk about one that, that particularly galls me, and that is the question of Chinese generals who massacred Chinese young people at Tiananmen. My sons are 19 and 22 years old, the same age as the, of the young people who were killed at Tiananmen. After Tiananmen, the Congress and the Bush administration had an agreement of no contact with the Chinese generals. After the Clinton administration came in, there was a 180 degree change in the, in the uh, policy. And so far as we can tell, every Chinese general who had a personal uh, responsibility for Tiananmen came to the United States, was honored by a 19-gun salute, met with the President of the United States uh, in the Oval Office, toured military bases they should not have, and in one case, uh, one case, uh, the American people gave them a uh, gave a general a Hawaii vacation uh, for free. In fact, it's still going on. There was a picture taken of a Chinese general in September. The picture was never released in the United States. It shows the president with his hand out like this, talking to the Chinese general, and it was on the front page of all the Chinese uh, newspapers, but never released here. All of this was all done in secret. I think it's outrageous, and, uh, and this should not have happened. Edward Timberlake and William Triplett, our guests. We go to Asheville, North Carolina, on the Liberal Line. Good morning. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, especially for uh, Mr. Timberlake, um, I'm a, a former military officer also, and I'm very I'm concerned about all this. But I, what I'm going to ask you is, is a little bit different from the initial question I was going to ask. But basically, is is a lot of this problem you think from more from the naivete of the Clinton administration about military matters, and also just generally, it's like one thing I think you would recognize is like. The military tends to have a mindset that we're going to we're going to tell them what we think they want to know. And for example, the Joint Chiefs for the last six years said, "Oh yeah, the budget's fine. The budget's fine. The budget's fine." And suddenly, when it starts to become an issue and there's some extra money around, the Joint Chiefs come up and say, "Oh, okay. Now we want plenty of money. We want more money to spend on readiness. Things are starting to fall apart." And I, I'm thinking that perhaps the Clinton administration was ill served by the military in them not actually telling them about some of these mistakes that were being made in the effort for commerce. And then finally, I guess what I'm going to say is, I, there, I'm sure a lot of things were done wrong, but do you think uh, President Clinton consciously went out to subvert the country's uh, 
uh, national defense, uh, are you saying that he's treasonous and should be tried for treason? Thanks. No, I, will, I, I will never use the word treason. That's inappropriate for us, uh, both uh, as, as, as who we are and as staffers on the Hill. That's not right. We conclude the book with the word impeachment. Uh, these are, in our opinion, Im impeachable crimes. Uh, is there an element of naivete? Yes. Uh, did he w knowingly uh, deal with some pretty disreputable thugs for money? Yeah, probably uh, wide open knowledge. Uh, in fact, uh, we document one case in the book. Uh, I'll get to the military in a second, but we document one case in the book. Uh, this was the hearing that I covered in the Senate in which uh, two gentlemen who went under oath, uh, Dr. Carl Jackson and Mr. Clark Wallace, testified that uh, in front of the CP Group of Thailand, which is a leading conglomerate dealing with the People's Republic of China and the CIA and, uh, will not release or said you have to go in a classified realm to find out what they do with rogue nations. But the CP Group came in, their executives, into the map room, and John Wong solicited uh, a campaign contribution in front of the President of the United States. So, uh, in essence, uh, I think he had direct knowledge of it. These people said that under oath. But as far as the military is concerned, that is of a great issue. Both Bill and I go back. Uh, I was a young analyst, uh, worried about national security in the Carter years, uh, worked uh, under contract to the intelligence community. And uh, we sit around a table and debate with a lot of people appointed by J Jimmy Carter. And we always had very vigorous debates, and they were very honorable people. And it may be wrong on certain issues, and maybe we were wrong, but, but you always had a sense that the good of the country was in their heart. Same way with Reagan and Bush. Those fights were for, for the real reasons. But something happened. It seems like this whole element has stepped over into the what's in it for us realm and that's a problem. Ed Temperlake uh, also was a marine fighter pilot he was a Vietnam Vets Leadership Program Action Agency Deputy Director and in addition was a Bush presidential campaign staffer in 1988 Paso Robles California go ahead please. Yes good morning gentlemen I am sitting here listening to this thing and I'm bewildered I'm bewildered because I cannot understand why people can't believe what you are saying uh, I fought in World War II. Uh, I believe in a good, strong defense system. Bill Clinton has been operating a uh, orchestration to reduce our military strength by diverting forces all over the world, not uh, uh, replacing those uh, people and equipment that we use. And there seems to be an element within the White House, because it is so strong, nobody leaves, that there has to be some type of... Uh, I wish I had a more... Uh, uh, value of the words, but there seems to be some kind of a system of you say something that we don't like, we're going to get you. Bill Triplett? Well, certainly uh, the war room uh, in the White House or associated with the White House is well known, and uh, everyone is, is concerned about it who, who writes up anything that criticizes the Clinton administration. Uh, but I agree that with the caller that certainly national defense uh, is, uh, is an important issue. It is interesting that, with the exception of Mr. Gore, almost no one in the national security apparatus has ever served. In the back of the book under notes, I want to read a little bit of this. You say, much of the information presented in this book is new. A number of previously classified documents make their first public appearances on these pages. Why? Why, why, why do we have classified documents? Well, no. Uncla no not, why not, do a number of previously classified documents make their first appearances on these pages? Do you have special access? Uh, no. We filed them under the Freedom of Information Act. And, uh, for example, that's how we found out about the Chinese general who came here in secret and how we, uh, you and I paid for his vacation. In the course of our new investigation, we went to China, Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. We combed records in Hong Kong for signs of a Chinese military presence in the satellite launch business with a young woman volunteer as a cover. We visited Macau, criminal syndicate figure, and Gore, Clinton Gore donor. Pronounce his name? Unlap Singh. Unlap Singh's principal place of business. We got Taiwanese officials to confirm that Clinton pal Charlie Tree was a member of a Chinese criminal gang. Back home, we tore open the official cover of Costco. Costco delivers weapons for Chinese armed strugglers, and it is about to take over the naval facility at Long Beach, thanks to direct high-level intervention from the White House. When you go back to the, the one comment there, how did you use the young woman volunteer? That was Bill. Uh, that was me. Um, this brothel that Ong Lap Singh has in, uh, in uh, Macau is disguised as a hotel. And uh, the first floor looks like a hotel. And so we went in to look at it and to see what was advertised and also to go in the back in the, uh, where a lot of the operations uh, happen in the 
in the coffee shop. The man seems to run the place from there. I didn't take this young woman friend of mine above above the first floor for obvious reasons. But in the in the hotel there were large uh, pictures showing what the activity that goes on upstairs. And in the coffee shop that's where the uh, gangsters hang out when they're off duty. And the young woman was a volunteer. You didn't pay her. Uh, yes. And how old was she? Twenties. Chinese? No. What was the purpose of having her there? Uh, frankly, I didn't want to be solicited by the uh, prostitutes that were hanging around the, pl the, uh, the hotel, uh, quite frankly. For Bill Triplett and Ed Temperlake, we go to Buffalo, New York on the moderate line. Good morning. Thank you. Um, how you doing, Brian? Good, sir. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, gentlemen, I I'll be the first to uh, be on at your side or at your defense if the truth comes out about Clinton um, being in tie with this Chinese situation. I think nobody can um, accept that just like the situation is in now. Nobody can approve of that. And if he is, if it's proven that he's done what you're saying, then I'll be one of the first ones to come to your defense. But when it comes to the campaign financing and all that, I think your book would have more credibility if you also pointed out some of the things that the Republicans have been accused of, maybe not proven, but accused of, as far as the Trinidad group situation with Haley Barber, as far as uh, um, what Pat Robinson is going through now, as far as being investigated about um, the not-for-profits and go pack with, uh, with, with uh, New Gingrich. And, and like you said, with Clinton and Gore and, and the Democratic side, it's there too. I think the, the McCain-Feingold bill points that out. But it died in the Senate. And, I mean, everybody knows there's a problem there. But I'm saying you'll have more credibility if you see the problem as a two-way street, not on just on one side or the other side, but on both sides. William Triplett. Uh, first, we do, in fact, cite uh, someone who did show up in our investigations. Uh, a Republican candidate on the, uh, in California uh, was uh, the recipient of some of this money. Who and, was it? Uh, Fong, and he was defeated. So he was the only one we could find. But this is, a, this is a national security book. We're looking at sources of money from the Chinese military, and we didn't find any uh, on the Republican side except this one guy. Ed Temperlake, is this going anywhere, this book, the information in it? Is there any process underway right now, legal process that will further investigate this? Yes, sir. It's not, well, if you consider House investigations a process uh, with legal overtones, yes. So. Which, which committee? Well, what we've done is we've made wide distribution on it. Uh, it's an interesting day to be on your show because uh, the Judiciary Committee, uh, it, it does not have the time at this moment to, to pursue this, although some of their comments are saying that they're not exonerating anyone at this point. So they will pick up the uh, mantle. In addition, uh, we expect uh, it was given to Chris Cox's committee, uh, and we'll see what he can produce, Chairman Cox. And uh, the Intel Committee should start looking into it. And... Uh, Perhaps Dan Burton, who has said he will do it, will continue on uh, with his investigation. Norfolk, Virginia, on the Liberal Line. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Uh, gentlemen, I would like to take issue with your interpretation and your conclusions. You look at the Clinton administration as being a failure, I assume, in foreign policy because of his relationship with China. Benjamin Netanyahu said it best, much better than I could ever say it. Mr. Clinton is a warrior for peace. It is a policy. It is not naivete. It is called engagement. We are hoping that the Chinese people will see the benefit of capitalism, of free markets, of the kind of system that brings prosperity. We can only do that, gentlemen, by showing them or leading them in the way towards technology. That's the key to the future. Obviously, the uh, situation with Russia proves that you can advance technologically, militarily, like Russia did, and leave the people in the dust. And that is not what we want. And Mr. Clinton is a genius at foreign policy, far from any of your conclusions. We are much better off today than we were 10 years ago. Thanks. Ted Timberlake? Okay, fine. Well, let me, let me kind of say, I go back a few years here. And from the Carter years on, uh, the policy with China was very simple. There were two elements to it. Minimize their high-tech stuff, especially as it pertains to military equipment. Uh, stop any kind of uh, uh, modernization or mobilization potential that they have on the military side of the equation while fostering democracy. And uh, when Bill Clinton came in, and I remember these days well, he pounded Mr. Bush, and Vice President Gore was even worse, in which they called uh, Mr. Bush the uh, gentleman coddling the butchers of Beijing. We all remember those. He campaigned on those as an issue. 
And right in the office, he does a 180. And in essence, what Bill and I track in the book is a reversal of that policy. They are allowing the military to increase their effectiveness while sending signals that dissidents and, and democracy movements should be stifled. So it's a complete reversal of, of sane policy from Jimmy Carter to Ronald Reagan to George Bush. We're talking about this publication. It's called The Year of the Rat, How Bill Clinton Compromised U.S. Security for Chinese Cash by Ed Temperlake and William Triplett II. And they'll be with us for another 25 minutes. And then Lars Eric Nelson will join us for about uh, an hour and 15 minutes. We go next to Gainesville, Georgia. Go ahead, please. Yes, good morning. Thank you for C-SPAN. Thanks for calling on the conservative line. Go ahead. Yes, gentlemen, uh, in your uh, research, some of the technology that has been transferred, uh, in your personal opinion, do you see the, the possibility that any of this technology will actually be used against us in the near future? Bill Triplett, would you like to answer that? I will. Uh, one of the things we discovered when we went out to the Far East was that uh, America's number one defense uh, a contractor had uh, sold a, a satellite to China's leading arms smuggler and um, uh, the people who, who bring in uh, military technology. And this satellite is going to be used, we think, to modernize the Chinese missile uh, uh, test range. Uh, you put the satellite up in the air and you run a signal up to the satellite and down to ground stations and it allows your, your, um, uh, your test range uh, to be modernized. It allows you to perform certain maneuvering man, um, uh, man maneuvers with the, with the, the missile itself uh, to hit the target. And uh, we gave them a, an entire moderniza modernization of that. Amherst, Massachusetts in the moderate line. Go ahead, please. Hi, uh, this is uh, Mel in Danvers, Massachusetts. Uh, congratulations, gentlemen. I'm going to certainly look for your book. There's a couple of subjects that uh, I would just like to run across. Uh, what I have been noticing is that there was a very close coordination uh, between the Long Beach fiasco, uh, so to speak, and there were a cargo of guns caught you know, on the West Coast. I think they're still in the cargo ships. And uh, the, what, what has bothered me, you know, I'm, I'm 70 years old, and I've looked at this thing for a long time and very hard. What's, what's to say that the missiles couldn't be imported into the United States in 10 or 12 uh, Chinese cargo vessels? They could be in the Mississippi River, the Great Lakes, East Coast, West Coast, Long Beach. Thanks, caller. Let me first ask you about the Long Beach facility. Right. What's the status of it today? Well, I'm in Washington, so I can't say that uh, everything's ever finished. But it looks like maybe just maybe the good guys won. Uh, uh, Congressman Duncan Hunter and Duke Cunningham, great ace from Vietnam, uh, and Senator Jeffords uh, finally managed to get legislation enacted that precludes Costco from going into Long Beach. But of course, never, nothing's ever finished in Washington. President sign it? Uh, yeah, it's done. But we hope that, and it won't be undone. But, but then again, you never know. Uh, the president did lobby extensively for Costco. He had his uh, national economic staff call in, which is very unusual. Uh, what your caller referred to, though, uh, is a very telling comment on what happened. Even the president admits this was bad. Wong Jun, he's head of Polytechnology, he's also head of Citic, very senior guy of Prinsling, a uh, very powerful man, almost cabinet level in China, uh, came in and had coffee in the White House. That's the one the president said was clearly inappropriate. While he was coming to America, a Costco ship named the Empress Phoenix was being loaded with uh, automatic uh, machine guns. Those machine guns were uh, taken down in Operation Dag Dragonfire out in uh, Oakland, California, in which, uh, lo and behold, Polytechnologies, uh, the executives, were indicted. So the gentleman who's having coffee with the president has a firm that's indicted for bringing automatic weapons into the country. The second shipment was supposed to be Stinger missiles. That's real bad. Dublin, Texas, on the liberal line. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. I had a couple of questions for the two gentlemen here. Number one being... From the South, we still would like to refer to the president as Mr. Clinton and not just Clinton. I think that's totally inappropriate whether you like him or don't like him. Secondly, just how many books did the uh, Republican National Committee buy from you guys? Bill Triplett. I'll take this one. First, uh, we refer to him as the president sometimes, Mr. Clinton sometimes, and if we slip, uh, occasionally, I'm sorry, calling him uh, Clinton. Uh, that's how the newspapers re refer, refer to him, and frankly, the change in the process of not calling someone by president uh, 
occurred when Mr. Clinton ran against Mr. Bush. That's the first thing. Second thing, the Republican National Committee has not bought a single book that I know about. Could you possibly call them up and encourage them to do so? We'd like to sell wherever we can. In the notes in your book, this paragraph, we interviewed dozens of witnesses and experts here and abroad. Perhaps the most significant interview which we conducted jointly occurred in the spring of 1998 when a retired senior CIA official told us about Chinese espionage operations in the United States. Without violating his oath of secrecy, the official confirmed our suspicions. A prime goal of the CCP is to insert someone under its direction into the highest levels of the United States government. The party wants direct access to the president and the vice president. Sadly, the results of our investigation show that was achieved in this administration. How can somebody from the CIA, an official, tell you about Chinese espionage operations without violating his oath of secrecy? It, it was pretty easy. He was, one, he was retired, and two, he, he talked in, in specific generalities. And we, we laid out our case, and uh, we presented our evidence to him. Uh, it was kind of a Joseph Conrad moment in a way. We're sitting on a deck overlooking the Severn River cooking steaks. The gentleman flew in. And uh, he told a real tale, uh, uh, almost uh, like the, uh, uh, the heart of darkness in a way, in which um, the American intelligence community was very successful against the People's Republic of China for a long time. And uh, what a lot of this is, I think some of the names they use, uh, some of the ways they did it, pure payback. Uh, some of these names are insults. Uh, Ung Lap Singh, he and uh, the people who are conspiring uh, to send the money in, they're redeveloping Macau. And you know what? He calls his project the Rose Garden Project. So there's an element here of uh, in your face, uh, and this guy uh, did not step over any lines. Uh, I'll go into oath on that one. But he did say, yeah, you, you guys kind of got it right. Edward Temperlake and William Triplett, we go to Newburn, North Carolina, on the conservative line. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Uh, I just called to tell you guys, first, I can't get the book. The other thing is I'm saying, I am a conservative, and you guys have... So far as I can see, cried wolf with this Lewinsky thing that nobody believes what you're saying anymore. And I'm so angry that right. when you have something to say, it gets wound up because of this yelling stuff. And it's, it's, I'm just so angry with, with you because when you have something, nobody's going to believe you because you've done the new Gingrich thing too long. Thanks. Uh, let, let me take this one. Uh, we're sorry about the problem uh, with getting books out, uh, but again, it's a, it's a, it is a, a pleasant problem because the book is selling out. Uh, you can find it on uh, the internet, and there's also a one eight 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 number, one eight 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 two one nine. 4747. They do have books, and so please uh, uh, have some confidence uh, that you can ultimately get it. Who is the 888 number? Who are they calling? That's the, the publisher. That's the distribution network for Yeah. yeah. And that number is 219-4747? Right, triple eight. But it's an 888 number, not an 800 right. number. That's correct. And second thing, we shared uh, your concern about uh, Monica Lewinsky. In fact, that partially stimulated us to write the book because we thought that they would be chasing the wrong rabbit. Fort Riley, Kansas, on the moderate line. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I was just calling uh, Mr. Tim Mr. Timberlake, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Triplett. I appreciate you coming on the air. I appreciate all the guests that do come on the air. Uh, Mr. Timberlake, I, I believe that it is a fallacy. How uh, you always mention that uh, you used to be in the military and D Dunker Hunter, Mr. Duke Majin used to be in the military and therefore, you know, you guys know the best thing that, you know, for the military. Uh, I think you should call the president Mr. President and I think you probably should mention more about the Iran Contra scandal, scandal sorry, rather than uh, focusing just on on the uh, things going over in China. Why, uh, give us a little more on why you think they should focus on Iran-Contra. Well, I, I think that there, there was a lot of things that went on during that era that, uh, that we may never know and, and that we should, we should keep investigating into that as well as anything that might happen in, in uh, China or might have happened in China. Thanks. Let, let me say that with regard to, to uh, Iran-Contra, there was a, a very good book written by a man by the name of Michael Ledeen some years ago called Perilous Statecraft that talks about Iran-Contra, and there's a lot more in there that we will ever know uh, about. It. We're only covering one issue. By the way, on the front page of the Los Angeles Times, there's an article today, and it has, it's, it's tangential uh, in this sense. It, it, the headline is, Hyde's view on lying is back haunting him, and it's David Savage writing about what Henry Hyde said 
1987 about Iran-Contra and about lying. And he says he mocked the sanctimony of all who sermonized about how terrible lying is. Granted, lies were told, he said, but it hardly makes sense to label every untruth and every deception an outrage. And that's Henry Hyde about 11 years ago. Question to both of you, do partisans in this town change their mind about lying depending on whose ox is being gored? Well, there's always an element of uh, people being caught crosswise on, on uh, an issue where the a specter of a hypocrisy is raised. But uh, in essence, uh, we would focus on the book and, and, and uh, the issue of Chinese communist uh, penetration in. And uh, the House will probably, and I'm a staffer, so I, I, I'm a little bit nervous even going down this path, but speculating that maybe just maybe those impeachment, the impeachment uh, indictments will, or whatever they will come out, they'll be voted on. Um, the one issue we'd like to raise, though, is that uh, this, is, this is going to come out, Brian. When we're sitting in a library 10 years from now, we believe with the footnotes and everything that we'll reach on and say, what was it like in those days? And you'll pull it off and it'll still be real. And uh, regardless of the small atmospherics, uh, I would like to offer this as kind of a gift uh, to the Democratic Party uh, to allow them to kind of say, yeah, this is important and regain uh, the Harry Truman legacy, the Scoop Jackson legacy of being strong on national security. They can regain it because right now, uh, President Clinton, which I think I've said all along, unless I said Clinton Gore, which is how it's referred to, uh, and I will always be respectful, um, basically as head of party now. He has also pledged their future to the good behavior of the People's Republic of China. That's the side of history he has them on right now. That may not be the side they want to be on. Front page of the Wall Street Journal suggests that the Republicans identify foreign policy as being the big issue and military might the big issue for the year 2000 election. We'll ask our guest about that in a moment. We'll go to next call, Diamond Bar, California on the Liberal Line. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Brian. Hi. Uh, first, before I uh, mention about Costco, I'd like to uh, say that out here, we had Jones inner uh, cable, and they were going to try to take you off and put a shopping channel on, and we all fought to keep you on, so we want to make sure that you just stay fair. I remember one morning, a conservative <laughs> called up and said, liberal were on top, so you changed the numbers to put the conservative on top. What difference does it make? But anyhow... I kind of agree with you, but we did it just because it doesn't matter to us either which one's on top, and that was the whole point of it. Now, my point is, is just please always stay fair, because there's just as many Democrats watching you as there is conservatives. We've always thought that. Our polls have showed for years, for the last 20 years, that it, it kind of goes 30-30-30, with 10% out there somewhere on some limb. <laughs> Go ahead. Now, I do appreciate C-SPAN. I watch it every morning, and, and you guys are great. Uh, according to Costco, what, they're, what these gentlemen are saying is completely wrong. The mayor of Long Beach is the one that was pushing for Costco because it was going to bring $50 million a year into her city. So if they stop Costco there, the port of Los Angeles, right down the road, probably five miles, is pushing Costco to get them to come in there. So all this right-wing wacko stuff is crazy. Also in this area, Los Angeles area, there's not a, a liberal... Uh, radio commentator on any of the stations they have 24 hours a day five or six channels all they got is these right-wing wackos and conspiracy theories about uh clinton and everything else people are just sick of it so thanks they can tell you anything they want but it's not true thanks caller well, actually, Costco's already cost the American taxpayers some money. Uh, a Marine Reserve unit was wiped, uh, their, their housing was wiped out in the Northridge earthquake. They went to a place called the Mole, which is out in the Long Beach Harbor. It's a jetty. And then they determined that they really wanted to occupy a couple acres on the actual base. And uh, they determined that the Marine Corps getting that land basically for free because they had first claim on it was not highest and best use. So they had to rebudget uh, to move the Marines uh, off site. So you've already paid some money for this. As far as uh, moving to Long Beach uh, from to L.A., well, that's that's for the local representatives to uh, fight out. Bill Triplett, a, a fax here from George Shaver of San Diego. Is the quality of evidence in your book high enough to be presented in a court of law? I'm so tired of seeing accusations from you both, the Judicial Watch and many other places that never go anywhere. Uh, if what you and the Judicial Watch say is true, how can Clinton possibly escape impeachment and prosecution for treason? Uh, 
Well, I would, I would say that this is a book, not a legal brief. Uh, we uh, are trying to, do the, to present the best information we can, to present a narrative, to show how things happen, and uh, let the, the uh, uh, lawyers and, uh, and the readers decide. Cliff Press, or pr uh, it's P-R-E-I-S-S, -S, says, I'm outraged that your guest this morning is saying that President Clinton has completely turned around President Bush's post Tiananmen policy. It was President Bush that caved into the Chinese by saying that Tiananmen shouldn't affect U.S. China trading policy, keeping most favored nation status going with the Chinese only meant that Chinese money kept pouring into the coffers of Bush supporters. Many more millions of dollars reached those Republican supporters than those that later wound up at the DNC. Mr. Uh, Actually, Temperlake. we're not making the charge. We're making the charge that Clinton turned on his own policy. <laughs> he was anti, anti uh, Bush's stance on the People's Republic of China. And then when he came in, he jumped even further ahead of Mr. Bush on that but issue. But don't you like that, though, from a policy standpoint? What's that? The, the fact that he went against his own policy. No, we're, we, we didn't. No, no, no. The issue being he, he, he campaigned against George Bush in a very uh, vehement and direct way on Bush calling up to the butchers of Beijing. My boss, Chairman Solomon, was worried about stuff going over. So you don't like the policy from either George Bush or Bill Clinton? Not on satellite technology. Mr. Triplett, what about you? We're looking at the military side. Uh, after Tiananmen, the Bush administration and the Congress had an agreement Nobody comes to the United States, uh, particularly if they're a general officer with uh, blood on their hands. What has happened that has turned it around is all of these generals who were personally involved in commanding troops to kill the Chinese young people. They've come here, and it's been done in secret, and they've gotten tours of, of military bases and uh, honors at the, at the Pentagon. Mount Clemens, Michigan, on the conservative line. Go ahead, please. Yes, good morning, everybody. Um, in discussing this Clinton scandal all year with, with family and friends, um, the one thing that we always said was that we felt that the administration was not happy, but preferred the entire country talking about the Lewinsky scandal so that this kind of conversation wouldn't ever really come up on a daily basis. I think that this, this is the one that they're really most afraid of. And do you agree with that? And do you actually think that this is going to come out to the point where it's going to put him in some serious trouble. Thanks. Um, certainly we agree that this is more important than the Monica Lewinsky business. Uh, we are disgusted but by what went on in the White House, but this is national security on the one hand, it affects us. That's number one. Number two, it also uh, affects uh, individual Americans in the way Lewinsky doesn't because we have an entire chapter devoted to the question of the Chinese uh, armed smugglers and military guys moving into uh, financial uh, things in, in, New, in New York. And ultimately, you're going to find, uh, through the book, a Chinese military connection to your uh, retirement fund, if people Lars, are careful. Excuse me. Lars Eric Nelson will join us in about 10 minutes with another point of view. And on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, this is the lead item in Washington Wire on this Friday. Israel worries Clinton's Mideast trip will boost Palestinian in statehood hopes. Clinton plans a televised speech on Mideast peace to students in Israel next week and talk to a Palestinian council in Gaza. Israelis lobby against Air Force One landing at the new airport in Gaza and fret over details of a possible Clinton stopover in the West Bank town of Bethlehem. We won't cross any lines in terms of sovereignty, says the White House spokesman. The trip also aims to boost a, a support at home for Clinton's plan to give the Palestinians an extra $400 million in aid. House International Relations Committee Chairman Gilman warns of significant problems with that respect. The, uh, to build support, Clinton plans also to propose an additional $1.2 billion for Israel and $200 million for Jordan. The White House invites lawmakers to join Clinton on the trip with one requirement. They must go to Israel and Gaza, not just Israel. And I want to ask either one of you, here we're talking about $400 million to the Palestinians, $1.2 a billion additional to the Israelis, $200 million to Jordan. Are there any ties here, as some of our factors say, to financial contributors? And no. the uh, I was in the Middle East very recently, and uh, I didn't you know, see that. What I did see, though, uh, as a staff again, uh, a great concern that uh, both Israel and, and, and Jordan are in what they call a kill zone. And that was a Jordanian term I heard, in which uh, bad things, missiles, will fly over their country targeted, and the anti-ballistic missile systems, or however they take them down, will rain death and destruction on their heads. So the principal concern we saw was the proliferation issue of uh, weapons of mass destruction and 
tactical weapons in the hands of rogue nations, upgrading Iranian missiles is not a good idea. Oh, we've got to blame the Russians for that more than the Chinese. Year of the Rat is the publication, five minutes to go, published by Regnery. They gave us an 800 number this morning. It's 888, not the 800, but it's the same toll-free number. And if you want to get this book and can't find it in the stores, 219-4747 is the number you call. 188-219-4747. We go to Beverly Hills, California, on the moderate line. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Lamb, for taking my call. Gentlemen, I... I I felt so sorry for uh, Senator Thompson when he was doing the hearings because he absolutely accomplished nothing. But during the chart that he had, uh, uh, the Republicans had on on the uh, floor about the uh, certain uh, ties with, uh, like, the Riottis and that, above the Riottis was a gentleman's name called Yip, Y-I-P. And I was wondering if you uh, involved uh, or picked up on anything of him because we go to Vegas quite a lot. And uh, he's quite a big friend of, of uh, uh, the Mirage, uh, uh, why, oh, I can't think of his name right now, Wind. And he makes that trip about four times a year. And when he comes in, there's 40 people that are behind him, and they're all named Jip. And this is all expensive of uh, Wind. And I was just wondering if there was... Uh, Something that you had picked up on that one. Thank you very much. Mr. Temperleck? Yes, actually, no, we, it's, a, it's a mystery to us. But this brings a very good point up. If anyone is going to look a camera square in the eye, Republican, Democrat, liberal, or conservative, and say that there's nothing there, they can't say that. Because Bill and I have just touched this, and we don't know yet what we don't know. We don't know how much money's there. We've only found maybe $10 million. Uh, we don't know how many uh, different conduits of information and collectors have been around. We found 11. So uh, she does raise a good point. If it catches us by surprise, and now the name's out all over the world. We just don't have any idea what that really means. But we're sure there's a lot more there. And there's another book to be written. We probably won't write it. By the way, your book has uh, color photographs, which is unusual for a publisher to uh, go to that expense. Why, do you think, uh, Mr. Uh, we insisted. We thought, frankly, that, uh, as the Chinese say, a picture is worth a, a thousand words. And we thought that people ought to see the pictures of these people to prove, in fact, that they had the connections with the Clinton administration. And you say that there are some 85,000 books out there now on the market? Uh, will be Printed with... as of December 14th, the printing run runs to 85,000. And what, what was the, um, uh, what's your expectation beyond that? What printing is that, by the way? Fifth. Fifth, fifth printing? Fifth one was 15,000, finished December 14th for distribution. And there are there all of those sold out, by the way, you're early? We can't tell. It's very strange. We've never been in this business before. It's first book. So uh, I think it's a very strange uh, business. Uh, I think to the extent that people continue to, to order the book and they continue to print them, that the demand is out there. For example, uh, we saw, sold more books on the, the call-in line than any other book that the publishers ever had on a single day. You mean the Regnery call-in? Right. Sir, they That's get right. 318, I think, one day on a call-in. That, that one eight eight eight. Yep. Yes, 219 number. Cleveland, Ohio, on the liberal line, thank you for being there. Go ahead, please. Yes, I'm a first-time caller. And Mr. William Triplett and Mr. Timberlake are saying that this is a matter of national security. But I want to say it's not a precedent. PBS had a special on um, years back regarding ball bearing technology that was given to Russia by Richard Nixon. Kennedy made a specific effort to stop it, which he did. And then the sale went, or the, the giving of this technology went ahead anyway this doesn't sound important until you understand that ball bearing technology is used in missile guidance systems for accuracy and now this same technology is being sold by russia to iran so this is not a president this is not the first time this was done and i think that that was a much bigger problem back then thanks caller well, I mean, what can we say? I mean, b b people do bad things, and they should be stopped in sunlight, and First Amendment rights should be exercised to bring it to the attention, both Republicans and Democrats. Hold people accountable. What would you say, Mr. Triplett, to the media or any kind of an investigative group looking at the year 2000, if they want to watch the flow of foreign money into the country before it happens, I mean, or as it's happening instead of after the fact? 
Well, I think that our purpose here is to show some, to put some sunlight onto this whole issue and try and keep it from happening again. That's our game plan. Our game is to stop this this process of foreign money coming in from dubious sources. What does your boss, Senator Bennett, think of you publishing a book and out on the hustings like this? Uh, Senator Bennett uh, approved my uh, writing the book. I did not show it to him until it was done. I'm speaking here only uh, on my own behalf and not his. Uh, but um, he did not. He did not object. Last call, Medina, Ohio, on the conservative line. Hi. 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 I read the book. It's excellent. Thank excellent. you. Excellent. I recommend it to everyone. Did you have trouble getting it? Uh, well, you know, I did go to the library, so I didn't buy it. <laughs> okay. But I do know someone that did buy it, so yes, they did get it. That's good. Yeah, because I told them about it, how good it was, and she takes so long to read, so she went and bought it rather than went to the library. But I'm quick, and I could not put it down. It is excellent, and it's well written as far as because it is very, very complicated, the whole story. But you make it so plain, and you complain, and you put all the dots together, and everybody, and it falls into place. But there was two things I wanted to say. One, the American people, especially Democrats, because I used to be one, uh, but I became a conservative when Clinton ran because he was so you could tell he was so slimy. But anyway, the point is that uh, the Iran Contra and, and, and various other uh, things that went wrong. You didn't have a hundred and some people leave the country or take the fifth. I mean, there's the first thing. The American people have to understand there's, there's something here that so many people would co run for cover. And secondly, I remember something. Jim McDougal, when he used to lie for Clinton, and he kind of like covered for Clinton, one of his last interviews when he turned, he turned and started speaking against Clinton and told, told the truth. They asked him in the interview on TV, I cannot remember who interviewed him, but anyway, they said, why did you turn on President Clinton? What made you actually, in the end, turn? And he said, when I found that Clinton sold the United States out to China. That Gentlemen, last comment. That's, well, news, that's news to us. Yeah, we, we agree with Jim McDougall if he's right on that, because we prove it here, but uh, sorry he passed away. What are you going to do in, in uh, retirement, Mr. Temperlake? Oh, uh, think right. Try and follow this a little bit further. Is there another book? Don't know yet. Uh, we do. The, the, when you go to a publisher, they offer you uh, like a, a book refusal. You have two more coming if you want to give it to them. And uh, who knows? I mean, each chapter is a, each chapter is a book waiting to happen. Mr. Triplett, are you going to uh, continue working for Senator Bennett? Uh, I think so. Uh, so far as I can tell, um, I do foreign policy for him, and I write for some other people as well uh, on Capitol Hill. This is the book. It's called Year of the Rat, How Bill Clinton Compromised U.S. Security for Chinese Cash. Edward Temperlake and William C. Triplett II. And again, that number is 188-219-4747 for those of you interested. You can go and buy a newspaper today if you want to hear what our next guest has to say. Here's his column in the New York Daily News, Lars Eric Nelson. Reich prosecutors are the real crime. We'll break for a moment.